welcome back to another episode of To Whom It May Concern. I'm your host, Malak, here with my co-host, Inara Khoyla and Maria. Hey, Sam. We hope everyone was able to enjoy their long weekend last weekend, as we sure did with our extra day off. But this week, we're bringing back an episode by popular demand. It's one of your favorites to listen to, and it's definitely one of our favorites to record. So oftentimes, we hear about different trials and cases on the news, and the one common thing that everyone should have a right to is an impartial jury. But is a jury really ever impartial? Everyone has their own reasoning, their own moral compasses, their own opinions and biases based on their everyday life that they kind of use in order to decide if someone is guilty or innocent. But as we know from many, many cases that we've heard about, not everything is black and white. And that's what we're going to test today. Maryam is going to present to us a controversial topic or a controversial case, I should say. And we're gonna try to come to a unanimous vote. But who knows what's gonna happen in this episode? We don't know the case. We're excited to hear and we're excited to decide what we think should happen. But for you guys at home, sit back and relax because the jury's in. So you guys have your notepads out and ready for all the details of the case I'm about to describe. <laughs> I'm going to yes. do it on my phone. Yes, yeah, I'm taking on my phone. Okay. And you listeners at home, make sure you're ready for this. This is actually quite a popular case and it's made popular by the Netflix documentary or series that was out on it called The Staircase. And what this case is, is about Michael Peterson on trial for the first degree murder of his wife, Kathleen Peterson. The way I'm going to present the evidence to everyone is based off of the actual case documents. So not anybody's outside circumstantial evidence that's been presented, not theories that have been presented by people who watch these documentaries. This is what's actually done in the court case itself, what the jury had presented to them. Okay, Mm -hmm. we're going to start by giving the state's evidence, the defendant's evidence, and then the the state's rebuttal to the defendant's evidence. That's the order we're going to go in. Wait, question. So state's evidence is the person who did the crime? No, the state's evidence is the prosecution's evidence. So So against Kathleen's. Yes. The defendant is the person that's being put on trial. Yes. Okay. Okay. So to begin, first, I want to define what first degree murder is in the state of North Carolina. And that's how you are going to be deciding if he meets all these elements. Okay, if the prosecution needs to prove beyond all reasonable doubt that these elements of first degree murder were met in order to sentence the defendant to jail time, or in North Carolina, I believe they still have the death penalty. The elements are an unlawful killing with malice with specific intent to kill formed for some measure of premeditation and deliberation. So essentially to simplify that, a willful killing that was premeditated. So So like they thought about it beforehand and then carried out the action. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Now moving forward with the case. This is the case of the state of North Carolina versus Michael Peterson for the murder of his wife, Kathleen Peterson. The state presented evidence to show that the defendant's wife, Kathleen Peterson, worked at Nortel Networks at the time of her death. She had worked there approximately 17 years and steadily rose up the corporate ranks to become an executive position, so a high-level position. At the time, she was supposed to take a trip on December 10th, 2001, to Canada to meet with another member of the company. However, at 2.40 a.m. on December 9, 2001, Durham Emergency Response received a 911 call from an apparently distressed defendant, Michael, where he informed the operator that his wife had an accident, however, that she was still breathing. He told the operator that he had found her fallen down the stairs and that she was unconscious. In response to questioning from the 911 operator, the defendant answered that the victim fell down approximately 15 to 20 stairs, but he wasn't sure and then he ended the 911 call. He then called moments later and told the operator the victim was no longer breathing and then again disconnected the call. It was said that during that time between calls, he called his son and that he arrived at the scene before the paramedics came. The first responders arrived on the scene less than eight minutes after the defendant made the first initial 911 call. 
And when they arrived, the paramedic, James Rose testified that there was enormous amount of blood at the scene. There was a lot of blood on the walls that was dry. There was blood under her head that was clotted and started to harden. He also testified that there was dried blood on the stairs, the stairwell, and it looked like that it might have been wiped away or wiped on or smeared. The defendant told paramedics, so Michael told paramedics that he had just gone outside to turn off the lights and came back in and found her at the bottom of the steps. Later in the trial, he did say that earlier in the day before him and his wife were hanging out, they watched a movie and they were chilling at the pool at around 2 a.m. where they were drinking wine and police did find two cups and a bottle of wine by the pool that collaborated his story. But then his wife went in to the house prior to him and then he found her later at the bottom of the stairs. So while the defendant at 241 made the 911 call, he stated that the victim was still breathing. When the paramedic examined her at about 250, he found that her pupils were dilated six millimeters, which indicated a substantial amount of, of time had passed without her having any oxygen. Okay, so the, he testified that there was also around 40 or 30 incidents evolving falls that he had seen. And the worst injury he had seen prior to that was a broken neck from a fall and that he never seen wounding on the back of the head like he had seen in this case. Another paramedic gave a similar testimony concerning the amount of blood. And he also noted that there was blood on the victim's clothes that appeared to be dry. So both paramedics said that the defendant had blood on his shirt and his hands. So Michael, when they found him, had blood on his shirt and his hands. And they also find there were specks of blood on his feet and on his legs. Shortly after, investigators also arrived on the scene because the paramedics blocked it off and called them. They decided that there was enough evidence there for them to be looking into it possibly being a homicide since there was large quantities, like we said before, of blood on the floor, on the victim, on her clothes. It, it wasn't typical of someone falling either up or down the stairs. It was something that appeared to be unusual for that type of injury. According to them, they had medical and forensic evidence. North Carolina sent a blood splatter analysis expert to the scene to see if this was something that was consistent with a fall. The Denver agent found that the blood being found on the steps and on the risers and on the corners were inconsistent with a falling. And it looked like when they sprayed the aluminol, which is shows wipe that isn't blood that isn't visible to everybody, that there was barefoot tracks leading to the laundry room with two footprints facing the janitorial sink. The official autopsy of the victim's body was performed by a forensic pathologist from the Office of Medical Examiner. And they said there was multiple blunt traumatic injuries on the victim's body, including bruises, abrasions, lacerations that were found on the head and the face. And their opinion was that these falls were, these types of injuries were inconsistent with a fall against the flat surface, like a stair step. And because it was primarily found on the back of the head, that was something that was unusual. Then there were several lacerations. So it wasn't just like one laceration on the back of the head. There were several, multiple on the back and the side. And they believed that each were caused by a separate impact. So that said, they believed that the victim was struck by an object rather than had a fall. Further, a neuropathologist with, that was consulting for the medical examiner observed evidence of plot force trauma, and they noticed that there was a significant decrease in blood flow to the victim's brain at least two hours before death that was caused by extensive bleeding from the lacerations. Now, you might say, why did he do this? Evidence as to motive. What did the prosecution have to show motive? They stated that there was two reasons. The first being there was financial evidence that the couple was going through a hard financial situation and that the defendant, Michael, would actually benefit over $1 million from his wife's death mm -hmm. because she had a life insurance policy and also the company she worked for would give like this paid money for prior work she did so they would give it to him so he was going to benefit financially and they also found on his computer that there was evidence that he was trying to hire a prostitute 
essentially for an encounter and so there was evidence of that so his unfaithfulness the defendant rebutted this they were saying that they bought an expert in forensic neuropathology that disagreed with the first doctor's opinion with the examiner's opinion and they testified that these wounds were consistent of a victim falling down the stairs and that the laceration did look like it was from a relatively flat and immovable surface like a stair step. Also, they showed that they lived in this huge mansion and in the front staircase and they had the back staircase. They said, the defendant said that she was walking up the back staircase after they had these couple of drinks and she also had prescribed um, volume. So she mixed, they were the defendant, yeah, volume. The, the, they stated that she had mixed the alcohol with the volume and then was walking up these narrow set of stairs that was extremely dark and had no natural light. There were no windows. And she was also in flip-flops. So all that together, they stated that she fell down the spell. She was walking up, fell, mm -hmm. got back up, fell again. And that that's what was happening. She kept trying to get up and falling injuring herself more and more on the staircase with hard falls. There was another forensic scientist that testified on behalf of the defendant, stating that the scene of the crime wasn't consistent was with a beating type of death. And he explained that the medium velocity blood splatter was caused by a variety of actions and it could have been done even by coughing up blood. And he did note that there were drops of blood that appeared in the victim's mouth so it could be evidence that she was coughing up blood and that blood was what resulted in some of the splatter droplets that they found. There was also a professor of biomechanics from George Washington University that testified for the defense applying biomechanical principles to say that the victim's injuries were inconsistent with being struck with an object, but were consistent with a fall. So you have these doctors presenting different principles and arguing with each other. So then we have the state's rebuttal evidence. So the state came back testifying with another medical examiner from North Carolina that stated in his experience, he concluded that it was unusual for multiple lacerations to happen across the top of the head by a fall and that there wasn't much blood found in the victim's mouth and there was no blood found in the airway or in the lungs. So it wouldn't give evidence of aspiration of blood from a person's mouth that would cause the the sporadic blood droplets there was another piece of evidence that was actually brought into court into trial court and later during appeal they were arguing whether this evidence was allowed and they later the judge found that it was allowable but this evidence is that when he was married so kathleen is his second wife prior he was married to a woman named patricia and they lived in germany when they lived in Germany, they had a friend named Elizabeth Ratliff, who also had children, which they ironically, he adopted later. But the defendant was friends with Elizabeth Ratliff in Germany. And it was found that on the morning of 1985, Miss Ratliff was found dead on the floor at the bottom of her stairway in Germany. And that the night before, he was actually, him and his wife was having dinner at their house and he had stayed behind to help the wife put the children away because her husband had actually died earlier from a heart attack. The families were really close. So it wasn't unusual for him to stay behind and help out with the kids. So she died from a death falling down a staircase. However, the autopsy that was performed in Germany stated that she actually had a spontaneous intracranial bleeding, and then she fell down the staircase. So the cause of her death was the intracranial bleeding, and then the staircase was the result of that. Now, the prosecution used this not to show that he did murder Miss Ratliff, but it was to show that he, where he get, may have gotten the idea to cover up a murder with a fall down the stairs. Mm -hmm. So later, they actually exhumed the body and did a re-autopsy and found that it actually looked like a homicide and that it wasn't the original Germany hospital's theory of her getting the blood clot and then falling down the stairs. So that is all the evidence. How do you, you re-autopsy that 
far. Yeah, they re autopsied that. that doesn't make sense. Yeah, they exhumed the body because she was buried in Texas. So both of them were actually U.S. soldiers for U.S. base. They were out there in Germany. And then so she ended up being buried in Texas. Oh, so from 1980, they dug up her body. Yeah, 1985. I and the case took place when? This, this was 2003. Yeah, how do you? I don't feel like that makes sense. Okay, whatever. Like, I'm surprised they re-autopsied 18 uh, years later. This case actually spanned approximately five months. So there is a lot of facts, a lot of details, a lot that went into this case. I tried to sum it up because we only have this yeah. 45 minute to hour segment for you guys to deliberate. But those are the facts that were presented before the case. Now you guys have to deliberate based off these facts, whether he is beyond a reasonable doubt guilty of first degree murder. And then at the end, I'll tell you what actually happened in his real case. The way you presented it, I'm like guilty. Take him to jail. 100%. Like it's confusing because you have different professionals in the same field saying different things. The the wounds are consistent with a beating. Wounds are not consistent with the beating. The splash is consistent with like someone getting. It's not consistent with the fall. But it is consistent with the fall. That's what's confusing. Yeah, that's what makes it difficult because you could look at the scenario in two different ways. But so now, now is there a doubt because. Is it because I heard the case first and Mariam presenting it where they're guilty? I'm like, yeah. And then you present the second one where I'm like, no, they're still guilty, <laughs> you know? Quick question, though. <laughs> I missed half the defendant's uh, evidence. The well, last thing they're saying that the lacerations could be consistent with a fall, and then they explain the type of fall that yeah. happened. With they the believe walking the up yeah. the stairs, she yeah. fell, got dizzy from the mixture of alcohol and val volume. Yeah, value. Yeah. That was in what her system. Th tried to get back up, fell again, and then just eventually landed at the bottom of the stairs, stopped moving. And then what they say about the motive? He wanted the bit. He wanted oh, the, the whole community <laughs> believes, and people testified, even his kids, his adopted kids, said that they had a happy marriage. They loved each other. Mm -hmm. They've been married for 14 years. And they were thinking he then, wanted the life insurance though, her yeah. life insurance, because they were having financial troubles. Yeah, that's the prosecutor. But the defendant said that they had a happy marriage. Oh, so all of the kids testified and they said that there was no well, issue. Oh, they said that, and the community members said they look like they have a, the perfect marriage. They were happy. See, whenever they say it's a perfect marriage, there's something. There's if they problem. said they had a normal marriage, sure. But if you say perfect, that's it. It's wrong. So oh, well, yeah. They were happy. They were saying these people <laughs> were happy. It didn't, they weren't about to get a divorce. The financial strain didn't cause them to even file for divorce. So that's well, yeah, what do you what do you prescribe that medication for? It's usually an anxiety medicine. Mm -hmm. So it does for sure alter, especially if you mix it with alcohol. Not a good mix. My only thing is like I I can kind of see both sides. But I feel like the kicker is the fact that the other lady in Germany died by falling down the stairs. Honestly, it like that's I'm weird. Guilty. I'm thinking guilty. <laughs> yeah, I think guilty too. But like Mariam put all of the the state's evidence, and like you know, I said I'm like guilty, and then especially with the fact that that German lady. Mm -hmm. I do think I don't know how fair it is that they did an autopsy 18 years later because I feel like a cranial bleed. I don't know like how relevant evidence is that many years later but i'm not an expert so like i wouldn't know yeah but that one was more inspiration they're not accusing him of, of doing it, it i know but that never that's like one of those things no, where it's like prosecutors use that yeah, yeah i'm not saying yeah. that happened i'm not using it for that but you let your minds do what it will yeah because it's ex imagine it's the same exact thing that happened but he wasn't found guilty but it's kind of like but look why it happened in his past before or something. Like, it's something he's capable of doing or being yeah. accused of. I thought, I'm like, man, he got away with murder last time. This time he thought he could do it. <laughs> I don't... He actually adopted the two daughters that were left because both the father and mother were dead. He adopted them and took him took them into his home. How do you know I don't put an image of being a good guy. You can't accuse that when you don't have proof. This is true. I don't know if I this would... This until proven guilty. Not guilty I, until and then until he proves himself innocent. 
I think if I would consider him guilty, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't consider him guilty of first degree murder. Like, I don't know if they had Wait, problems. Maybe. No, I don't think it's premeditated because like, even if he did hit her or if there was some kind of abuse taking place, I don't know if he intended to kill her. But I think, like, like, why would you keep going up with the stairs, falling again? Like, at that point, I'd be like, okay, I need to, like, sit down and figure myself out. Lish, I don't need to go up and She's down. She's wrong. To myself. And I like, that, that, story, that story is so not believable. Her tripping, falling, lacerating her head. I don't tripping. know. Like, if I was wearing flip-flops, I can't even walk down the street without tripping over them. Flip-flops <laughs> are hard to walk in. And I if think you have... No. Area, no, I, I don't think that's a real... I feel like... Mariam's trying too hard to push that narrative. No, I'm not. But this is actually people were debating this for a long time. And a lot of people still believe he was innocent. And they came up with a, a bunch of theories, actually, to how she died. But because those theories weren't in the trial case, I'm not going to explain them to you guys. I feel like that story wouldn't be so far-fetched. Like, the defendant's version wouldn't be so far-fetched if they weren't trying to claim she did it, like, five or six times. Like, I yeah. feel like, like, if they said one or two, I could believe it, but... But she had seven lacerations, so it had to be that many times. And he didn't like hear her falling the first five times. Like well, he's, he's outside, outside in the pool by the pool. So was there yeah, any so. like anyone that said that they were arguing or fighting or had some sort of heated debate? And were the kids home when this happened and they just oh. didn't hear anything? No. So they were just chilling in two AM by the pool. And then mm-hmm. she said, just watched the movie, went to go chill. I feel like if he wanted to murder her, like, why didn't he just drown her? Maybe he had a, like a, a violent tendency he wants to beat her. But, Mariam, what was that part you said about no oxygen to the brain? That, yeah, what was the that, cause of death? Saying that you, the first time calling and saying that she was still breathing, and then a couple of minutes later saying that she had died was inconsistent with me as a paramedic coming and checking because she looked like she had been dead or for a little longer than that oh so it looked like you waited and then made the call to the ambulance what was the but, official cause of death they said that the cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head with blood loss as a significant factor mm-hmm. okay when you're talking about first degree murder it has to be premeditated right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Without any evidence of any argument or anything like that, I feel like it wasn't a heat of the moment type of thing. Like, I don't think he just suddenly got mad and wanted to beat her up and accidentally killed her. So I would think that with all the financial issues and then him wanting to be with a prostitute, that it is something he thought about. But again, that's with me assuming. Honestly, he could have planted the whole alcohol and meds thing so that it looked like she fell down the stairs if he was premeditating but this is or he didn't like, want her to get maybe he didn't want her to get drunk and take the medicine so it's easier for her him to beat her yeah, yeah. And that's kill- another great assumption and she's never she's a, i'm assuming she's never gone to the hospital with any injuries like from before mm-hmm. This would be the first time she's ever been hurt by him. I mean, you can have a bad marriage, but that doesn't mean... And he didn't him. have any, like, prior criminal records of beating anyone. Other than that sh- shady story of his... In Germany. Dying similar, similarly. Hmm. I, feel like, like, I feel like the court was unfair for allowing that to be presented, honestly. No, I don't think that's unfair. That's kind of like yeah. an MO. He- but he was exonerated, so it's not something that you should present in court when he's being tried for another case that's similar. Well, he was exonerated. They, no. He was, they, exonerated they, they never outside. even had a case about her being it being a homicide because the Germany coroner said that she had a blood hem- hemorrhage before, she, and then that caused the fall down the stairs. But I'm saying because it was like he was never at fault, I don't think it was fair to present that in court, to be honest. But he, they never said that this he did both they're just saying this is where he got the idea from okay but they literally presented that with him in this situation to paint that picture in your head like there's no other they well, have no other purpose do you, think, do you think it's coincidence that one guy had two females dying from falling down the stairs okay but you need to think about this what it served like what they were looking to serve where oh he could have got this idea from anywhere but he got it from here this yeah is- 
into proportion to what it put in the jury's mind. That's what I'm saying. Of him being yeah. in the same situation is so. And it's, but it's not. And it's not like saying, "Oh, he watched this movie the night before, and his wife died the same way." It's a literally a friend of his that died exactly. the same way. How many people have people that matter in their lives die down the stairs or like in the same exact way? But he wasn't found guilty of it, so it shouldn't have been. In- I don't think it should have been. It's included. not about him being guilty or not. They're just saying that this is clearly a co- like it keeps happening with this guy. So I think they really altered the biases by including that i don't think it should have been included personally so if someone has a like let's say someone is in trial for stealing or whatever like stealing cars and then they mention a previous history of cars being stolen with him only around yeah that's that's not right right unfair unfair. yeah yeah that's (laughs) extremely prejudicial evidence it prejudices you before you even hear this case to think that he did it it's no like, they he, said all the facts and no, all the actually, other, those, but that's no. wait, but that's not a fact that's it not is a fact, fact. they His didn't prove died from falling down the stairs okay Here's a random tidbit. This guy killed his wife. Also, his friend died the same way 10 years ago. Look, yeah, that, that, that's, but he wasn't found guilty of it. But that it not shady, though? We're, that not that saying, not, no. we're not saying it's not shady. I'm just saying it shouldn't have been presented in court because he shouldn't be held accountable for it. Yeah. And by presenting it, they like cemented that idea in the jury's head. Yeah, because if he did it this time, if he did it before, he probably did it again. But oh, he didn't do it before. before. It's not proven that he did it before. Probably did though. <laughs> probably isn't beyond all reasonable doubt. Okay, but probably unless you probably, unless you seriously like witness it yourself and have like video recording, how else do you one hundred percent know? Everything is exactly. most likely. But you, that's why but you innocent. Can't look at the past. You have to look at the facts that you have for this case presented to you. With but the there's evidence always that you have doubt. Presented. But there's always going to be doubt. Wait, how about if by some coincidence, they both happen to be coincidental, but by presenting that they found him guilty and like gave him the death penalty. And then we find out like it really was an intracranial bleed and the other one literally had drugs and alcohol in his system. You know, you most likely get, actually, that's not true, but trauma is the most, well, it is true. Trauma is the most cause, like most likely reason of intracranial bleed. What he beat her up, caused the bleed, then she fell down. But it's not always. You can have an intercranial. Not bleed. always. No, 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 no. Okay, then. Not always. You're, you're just you're just drawing assumptions, Hawaii. You're the worst. These aren't facts. You're not giving facts. Honestly, <laughs> maybe because it's all kind of just summed up in one thing. It makes it seem so guilty. But if yeah. it was fanned out in like five months, who knows what I would think. But honestly, he looks but like summed up. And it's, okay, you actually hear from the defendant's evidence too. When like he his, his witnesses. Say, oh, yeah. and they're they're people that have doctorate degrees, PhDs. Like it's not just random. The street. They they have experts in their field. And also, his kids um testified. The adopted kids testified. Like, you can say someone's the happiest of people. Doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that they're not going to commit a crime. Okay, yeah, but we're not, kids and, would have some kind of inclination. Yeah, You're yeah. To- financial, and he was obviously talking to prostitutes. Like, there's other. One, there's one. some relax yourself regardless if they had such a beautiful marriage he wouldn't have anyone on the side i think oh well, that's a bold assumption to make <laughs> i think that the the jury definitely found him guilty because of that story but like i don't know i think he's guilty of something i think he beat her but i don't know if he meant to kill her like i feel mm-hmm. like he could have hit her but i don't know if it was premeditated so you do you not think be fell the, on the stairs and the stairs were what killed her? No, I don't think that. I think it's a stretch to say she got Malak up. actually fell down the stairs a couple of weeks ago. Malak, how did, how did that go? <laughs> I With the pretty have- bad bruises. Yeah, but it's... Hmm. Yeah, but normal bruises on her arms from trying to break the fall, not on her head, like slamming. It feels like he just... Every, yeah, her. that's interesting. How do, you, how do you hit the back of your head? Like you'd have yeah, to you fall. That makes no sense. Your, your body does whatever it can to protect itself. If she had a bunch of lacerations on the back of her head, I feel like he's taking her head and just banging mm-hmm. it. Or what if she banged it on the wall? 
No, I think seven lacerations is a bit dramatic. Like, I don't, I don't think she got up and fell seven times. I do think he beat her. I just don't know if he killed her. Yeah, our body. Has- what do you expect to happen if you're hitting somebody directly on their head? You know, I do think it's intended. Yeah, maybe it is. Multiple times. Okay, so let's come up with a final concise. Everybody has to have. Do you find this man guilty of first degree murder? Yeah, I would say guilty. It's always the spouse. Wait, always guilty. Happened. I think he's guilty, guilty of first degree murder. That's what I think he's guilty of first degree murder, but I still don't think they should have shared that story. <laughs> but so you think it was premeditated, not accidentally, like beating her and accidentally killing her. I mean, based on what Enoch yeah. said, like if you hit someone that many times in the head, what do you expect is going to happen? But would that still count as first degree, Mariam? Well, if it's spur of the moment, it, that's not. It has to be premeditated. I'm still going to say guilty because I kind of also feel like the alcohol and the medication could have been pre-planned as well. I'm not saying he necessarily did, but I feel like that worked a little, that worked out a little too much in his benefit. Yeah, and it was too cold of a night. And that they <laughs> You found, guys are making um, such leaps. No, and they found shoe prints towards the janitorial. Um, oh, yeah. That means somebody cleaned it with bleach. So that's a little shady too. Yeah, like if you were literally, if you saw the, the your wife, and you were actually in a frenzy, you wouldn't be like, let me clean the blood to hide my mm-hmm. track. And you wouldn't be walking back and forth. I mean, sometimes you didn't find that. No, then yeah, that's he, he, walked, he walked away, Maria. When no, they, you don't know that was his footprints. You don't know at what time that footprints could have happened. You don't know if it was after the paramedics came on the scene and he went to go there. No one knows yeah, the time that just happened. I don't oh. think it was the fact that there were footprints because yeah what if you wanted to get a towel to clean her up because she was still breathing and stuff like I don't care about the footprints being away I cared about that it was cleaned to try to erase the fact that there were footprints that's what she or maybe it just happened later and as a natural effect like you just wipe it but like if it's a crime scene and you're trying to remain innocent I don't feel like you start cleaning up the blood on the crime scene that doesn't make sense I don't know people have I, I don't think it was cleaning up blood and it was only the footprints that were clean. Was everything else, like, that was all still out there. I'm not sure. What happened to the conversation? So we mentioned that he was he called 911, but in between that, talking to his son. Yeah, no, he called his son to say, this is what happened, come home. And the son was at his friend's house and then came. This is a biological son? Like their kid? His biological son. They didn't have any kids together, I believe. Oh. Uh, I personally think it was premeditated. There's motive. The scene was too perfect. This clearly happens multiple times with him. And it just seems, it, it's, I don't know. It just seems like a slam dunk for me. I don't know why. Yeah, it seems I'll kind of clear that he's guilty. I'll agree with everything except for the fact that it happened before. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> too much of a coincidence. Okay, so an injury, it, falling down so the stairs. They, actually, they did find him guilty. A okay. first murder, and then he appealed, and this went all the way up to the North Carolina Supreme Court. And in wow. his appeals, he stated a couple of things. He stated one that they didn't have a warrant to search his laptop for his finances, where they found the emails, or for the emails with the prostitute, and then <laughs> that he shouldn't have bought up the fact that it happened before in Germany. Mm -hmm. And that that was wrong. And the third was that some statements made by the prosecution in the closing were a little testy. And in the Supreme Court, they actually said that none of these things um, harmed the case or gave him a right to a new trial. And they affirmed the trial court's decision. So what happened is after he put in an Alford plea, which is when a defendant, it's kind of, a t- it said, I'm still innocent, but this is a plea of guilt stating that there is evidence beyond a reasonable doubt for them to find me guilty, but I'm still innocent. So because he put in that plea, they did a deal where they lessened it from first degree murder to manslaughter. And then they did time served and he's actually out right now in house arrest for six years or and I think some time of that already passed 
in that time, he released books, he releases rights to Netflix for a documentary. So he's making a bunch of money off of this now. Wait, he I have a question. Sold, hold on, he sold the mansion that his wife died in for like 670 grand. Um, <laughs> now, yeah. Wait, how is it that they didn't have a warrant to search his laptop and stuff and that evidence still held up in court? Because they found that he did have some stuff printed and the stuff printed would have been enough to give the same statement of evidence. So although like, yeah, it's more like, yeah, they did something bad, but we would have found the evidence in a different way that they did have the right to have. So like, yeah, the like, um, printed. yeah. So like we would have found the emails in the drawer, which we did have a right to check, but we just checked it through your laptop instead, which we didn't have a right to check, but because they found they could find that evidence independently of the wrongdoing that they did that the evidence would still hold up i feel like that's so sketchy it is but it's actually no what i feel is sketchy is that stupid alfred plea i'm not guilty but i'll say i'm guilty how does that make any sense a plea is so that you can say you're guilty if you are guilty i don't like these forced confessions but usually pleas are reduced sentencing and stuff like it's so usually like, a deal. That that is so stupid because that concept forces people to say they're guilty when they're not guilty. It's like, oh, um, they're not gonna they're they're not gonna believe me anyway, so I might as well just say guilty and hold that guilt for the rest of my life for even though I didn't do it. Not saying that this guy didn't do it, I'm just saying in general. I just feel like his his technicalities were pretty plausible. And the Supreme Court just shut them down. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, well, they give their analysis and reasoning to why they shut each one down. But what I'm saying is actually Alfred pleas are Alford pleas are used. They're not that common because not many people like to plead them because it's essentially guilty. Like it's saying, wow, I know that all this is stacked up against me. I see where you're coming from, but I still didn't do it. <laughs> so because of that I'm going to plead that I'm guilty because there's no way I can plead that I'm innocent yeah it's stupid that's how it operates and it allows them to reduce sentencing which they did it just bothers me so much that there are people that are serving life sentences for something they really didn't do and they're in there forever and this guy got okay well time served so now you're at home making money off of this I feel like he got off a lot easier because this was such a media ridden case that so I mean, many people were watching it but i don't like fault him for doing whatever he could to get out i mean he's smart it's his life he's the only one that kind of has to suffer has anyone else fallen down the stairs since then <laughs> no not that i know of but did, he, did he always maintain his innocence yeah he's been saying he's innocent from the beginning up until now and there are people that believe him and there are people that come up with other theories. There's this wild theory that an owl actually went in and owls that are, are super common owl attacks in North Carolina, apparently, and attacked her in the staircase and then flew out. And people have made that argument and <laughs> give actual statements on so how that's possible. What's this guy's like story? What does he think happened that caused that much damage to her? He doesn't know. He said he she fell down the stairs. He believes that. He just came and he found her at the end and he's like, oh my God. Honestly, I would hate to be a jury for these cases. That's too yeah. much. Pressure. My <laughs> jury would be sitting there for years. Like I would not be able to come to this. I can't. I, I think can't. it took them four days in the jury deliberation room to And they all to have to court. say guilty. Yeah. It has to be unanimous. It was literally that story of the friend. I don't care. It sealed the deal. Yeah. So what was the Supreme Court's reasoning for allowing that to be told? To be honest, though, for me, it wasn't that story. It was... Oh, it sealed it for me. Really? Mm-hmm. What sealed it for you? Yeah. I mean, that added to it, but I was like, before that, already convinced he was guilty. Yeah, I was convinced. And then the, what kind of sealed the deal was like, oh, it happened before exactly the same thing. Yeah. Almost like that, exactly. that beyond unreasonable doubt was the story. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, maybe it has happened before and he got away with it. 
They said, based on these findings of fact, the trial court found that evidence regarding the Ratliff death to be relevant as to intent, knowledge, and absence of accident. Additionally, the trial court found that substantial evidence in the form of sufficient familiar facts and circumstances exists between the two deaths so that the jury could reasonably find that the defendant committed both acts. Yeah. And then the, that's what the trial court said. The defendant asserts that the trial court erred in admitting that evidence because there was no evidence which tended to show the defendant was responsible for that death. So the Supreme Court found that the trial court did not act outside the bounds of reason in determining that the probative value of the evidence was not substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice, and they hold that the trial court did not err in admitting the, uh, the death of Elizabeth Ratliff. Yeah. That was their official statement on that. It's similar to not mention it. Uh, they should have. I stand by the. You should know on appeal what they do isn't look at the facts. They look at did the trial court error in allowing it. So they said no, that the trial court had the discretion to look at that facts and determine whether they should allow it or not. So okay. in finding that is what happened, that's that what he, now. Do you think he's guilty or not guilty? I don't know. That's why I don't go into criminal cases. Because um, if I can find one possible alternative that I could reasonably believe happened, then I can't find this person guilty. Because I'm like, so, I'm going to what? send them to a life in prison when I could come up with a different scenario. Okay, what's the scenario? I'm not sure. Like drinking alcohol and mixing it with medication and trying to walk upstairs, which I know are very narrow and dark and hard. And maybe in her dizziness and her haziness, she kept trying to get up, fell back down, hit herself super hard. Maybe she did sit there and then fall again and then slammed her head the last time and then just laid there. You know, like I could see that happening and stairs are super scary. I don't know. Why was she, why'd she leave? Like, why didn't they go back together? He was turning off the light. <laughs> She's like, how could you not walk him in? Like if he saw, I mean, I'm assuming. I could see was, it. I could see if it. Was drunk and on meds, like he probably saw that she wasn't able to like. But maybe but that was definitely I, like financial problems, and he gets over a million dollars from her death. Like I can. On. It's always the spouse, especially if there's a financial. The owl yeah. theory hilarious. I find people so funny in what they can come up with. Well, it's always hard if it was somebody from the community. It's always hard to believe that somebody you know is capable of something like that. But like, I can believe you trying to like grasp at straws to draw a story. It's just crazy to see this case and compared to other cases of people who I, I was reading the Innocent Projects and actually you guys should check it out. And what the Innocent Projects is, is they look at old cases of people who still maintain their innocence and see if there were any troubles or any DNA evidence that contradict it. And there are people who spend 10 plus years, oh, yeah. I think the longest was like 35 years in jail then to later find that DNA evidence shows that it wasn't them. But all the evidence proved that it was them. They showed it was them, but it wasn't them. What if, what if, because the son was there when the paramedics got there. What if he told the son to do it? So he technically didn't do it. Or what if the son just did it and he was like, okay, leave. We'll just say she fell down the stairs. Wait, but many of the that same son that was there in Germany, right? This is the first, the first kid. Oh my God! What if it was the son this whole time? <laughs> the son is also the common factor. Wait, kids. but no, but Medium said this. Did it OJ people speculate it's also son. the son? What? Know. Yeah, and in OJ, people are like, it was the son who did it, and the dad is covering for him. No, I never heard of the son theory. Oh, but wait, I know this. There's a but, but Mariam, even um the innocent project that you're talking about, they all remember that Netflix, um, when they see us, that was a documentary too, and they were all innocent. All five of them were innocent. So it's um it surprises me, it doesn't surprise me at all that people are found guilty and they're not guilty. Like that I that does not shock me in the least. I think like it's bound to happen. You you know, you don't always have the all the evidence, there's no recording. So but oh. you do your best right within like yeah and i would rather have a guilty person free than an innocent person in jail yeah exactly and i don't think this case represented that maybe it's the sun now i'm trying to now I'm i think it's the sun let's put a new conspiracy theory out there i don't think anyone has said that before let's say now it was the sun who did it period no why was he there before the paramedics and it took the paramedics 
less than eight minutes before the first phone call. That's how do you get there so fast? What friend's house is he is? The friend's house like literally down the block? I don't know. Maybe he, maybe it was his neighbor. See, now you guys are assuming again. All I'm saying is it's an option. <laughs> it well, as you can see, the case has already been tried. And it's also someone she wouldn't be like opposed, not opposed to, but would be scared of or where she'd put automatic defensive mechanisms towards when being attacked. Yeah. Oh my God, maybe it was the sun, guys. Wait, Joelie, you just sent Mariam down a rabbit hole. Guess who's <laughs> going to start a Reddit post? <laughs> there has to be a theory about that if they thought of owls. I know. I don't know. Maybe he was just too innocent. It's always the too innocent ones, isn't it? Anyway, now that we've gone through all the theories, we find that our jury believes he's guilty of first-degree murder. Let us know what you guys think, if he's guilty or innocent, if they should have let certain evidence in, if the, the court was right. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. We can't wait to discuss with everyone. This, is, this was actually really fun because I feel like it was one of the juries in episodes where we came to agreement a lot faster. I feel like the other ones, we get a little more argumentative, but this one, we kind of drew that conclusion, which I still think was based on that story, but whatever, we're going to let bygones be bygones. As Mario said, <laughs> said, we'd love to hear it. I personally think I'm going to try to check out the documentary the next time I have some time on Netflix. I kind of like to see the whole scope of the cases just to like really get the details and everything. If you didn't already, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you don't already. Find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at The Modern Skeps. And as always, we so appreciate your views. Thank you. Sincerely, The Modern Skeptics. P.S. Was justice really served?